Welcome to episode 163 of Beyond the Brick. I'm Joshua Hanlon. I'm Matthew K. And we'd like to thank Life Lights for supporting this episode of Beyond the Brick. You can check out all of their great Lego lighting products at lifelights.com. Now, we're very happy to have Linus Booman joining us on the show this week. Uh, you might know him from the website Swooshable, and uh, he's also on Flickr, Facebook, Twitter, so you can follow him on all those platforms there. He is 30 years old, and he works as a partner, project manager, and developer at a small web agency. And uh, he was also, you might have seen some of his contributions to sites like the Brothers Brick as well over the years. And uh, when he can remember, he is also a member of the Swedish LEGO Users Group. <laughs> so uh, it's great to have you on the show, Linus. Thanks for joining us. Ah, thank you. It's cool, cool to be here. So if you just want to start off with a, a little bit of your, your history with LEGO and then maybe some of the, the stuff you've done with uh, Swedish LUG. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, well, I've been a builder all my life. Uh, well, apart from the occasional Dark Age and Grey Age and so on, of course. But I really, really enjoy LEGO. Always have, always will. I was the brickhead when I was a kid. Still, yeah, still am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that involved in uh, many lugs and so on, but uh, I, I talk to some people and I enjoy that. I'm situated in Sweden, so that's a bit uh, out of the way from the US, at least. By the way, oh. the name, Linus Buhlmann, in Swedish. Okay, <laughs> there you go. So in case I totally messed that up in the intro, <laughs> the official you pronunciation. You did good. I'm proud of you. But now Sweden has great proximity to Denmark, so would you say that Lego is a more pervasive toy in Sweden and Scandinavian countries at that? I wouldn't know. I've never lived in the US, but I do know that you have cheaper bricks over there than I have, so I am in envy you for that. Okay. I probably have been to Billund more, more times than you have, though. Since this it's is true. Closer. Since we've been, both of us have never been there. That's probably a good. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Well, it's it's a nice quiet town with a good legal land. <laughs> Headquarters is nice as well. <laughs> yeah, it's okay, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> but where I'm, uh, my town is pretty close to Copenhagen, which is the Danish capital, and they have a Lego store there, and I'm very proud, uh, well, happy to have that uh, uh, ability to go there at, at least. And now you're in uh, Malmo, correct? Yeah, Malmo. Okay, and so I so I know Copenhagen only got a Lego store up on very recently, right? Oh yes, it's true. It was a couple of years ago, maybe five, six, perhaps. I estimate it's the closest Lego store near me, and still it's in another country. So yeah. <laughs> Wild. Does uh, Sweden is it still the country itself going without still, or? I the... think we have one, or um, is about to get one in Stockholm. Stockholm, maybe. Okay. <laughs> that sounds about right. That sounds I have about right. I can check if you want to. Okay. And so uh, I guess now let's take the time to backtrack. What is your first memory of interacting with the Lego brick? Yeah, as I said, I've been a builder for all my, uh, all my life, but my most vivid early memory was when I was about four, I think. I, it was the time when I first managed to build a set from instructions, and I was like, you know, this big guy, finally. Managed to read the pictures, managed to put the pieces together, and oh, it was awesome, man. I you think it was, it. yeah, I made it. <laughs> I think it was a small set with uh, uh, two motorbikes and a small telephone booth. I don't remember the set number at the moment, but I know we have it somewhere. Like Legoland Town kind of set sort of thing? Yeah, it was. It was a Lego City set, uh, which was funny because I'm mostly generally a sci-fi builder since then, so, but yeah. Mm -hmm. So did you ever have a dark age after that then? You know, obviously growing up very young playing, did you ever hit a certain time when you kind of stopped? Oh yeah, of course. There's a time in everyone's life when you can't be a, a geek anymore. So, and I think I hit that one when I was 13 or 14 or, or something like that. And then, well, thankfully I grew up and left that awkward phase of my life and became a Lego builder again at 19 or so. Uh, yeah, I think it was the girls. <laughs> the girls <laughs> always do it. Typical yeah, story they there. <laughs> they do, they do. It's sad. But I started building again when I first discovered a, uh, well, actually I have to thank Bionicle for this. Uh, really? I'm generally not a fan of Bionicle, but I have to thank it for, for the, uh, thank the, the, them for reintroducing me to the hobby. Mm -hmm. I was walking down the Lego aisle uh, in a toy, toy shop and uh, discovered a Borok, I think they're called. A brown Borok, the, the things that could be a ball. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And I bought it because I needed to know, well, if this is Lego now, then what's happening? So I bought it and uh, Googled it, and then I came across the community. And that's what pretty much sets me off. 
That was around the time when we had the blade debacle, when everyone was discussing the new gray versus the old gray and so on, and I got really fascinated by that. So I so you were uh, turned took, off by like opening up a fan forum and seeing like what are all these adults talking no, about? No, I was totally children? fascinated. That yeah. was so cool. You know, people managed to, and you know dare to geek out, totally geek out, and yeah, always been a fan of passionate people. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So if, if you remember about a, a timeline as far as year, then would it have been like two thousand three, two thousand four, something like that? Uh, I think so. Somewhere okay. in there. Yeah, that. Yeah, I think I was 19, so it should have been 11 years ago or so. 11, 12 years ago. Something like that. Okay. Which should have been 2004. Yeah, math ain't my thing. So. <laughs> but yeah, so, so for people who might not be familiar when that when the, the Blay whole discussion took place and everything, it's right about those years there is where that was really a big discussion happening in the community. <laughs> it was a polarizing debate. <laughs> And so back then, I, I know from experience personally uh, that uh, it was like the whole LEGO community was sort of centered around LugNet and forums like that. So what yeah. were your like forums of choice back then? What were you a primarily a LugNet user or? I started out at LugNet, uh, and you know it was an awkward website. It was hard to use, especially even back then. You know, internet was yeah. still pretty young, but it was awkward to use. But then I discovered Classic Space. I think it was around the time it was built, and that became my main home. That's where I finally stopped lurking for real, and you know, became an active contributor. Sure. And uh, it was such an awesome forum. Many great people there. Uh, what made it awesome? I, I know, like the forums like that seem to have kind of reduced in importance. Uh, I feel in the present day, as we've all kind yes. of decamped for these big social platforms like Flickr and whatnot. So like, what, what was like the kernel of awesomeness within Classic Space in your eyes? Uh, the people, definitely the people. There were, there were so many awesome builders there to learn from. Uh, and uh, I got a lot of inspiration, you know, uh, watching Mark Sandlin, Ryan Woods, uh, Chris Giddens, uh, all of those guys. You know, the, the, there's, well, at least to me, I don't, I'm not sure it's true for the general people, but there is a certain a group of people that sort of define space building, sci-fi building, and, you know, those all hang out, uh, hung out at Classic Space. Totally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and I think if you had to pick a few people to, to define it, I think those would be some good builders there, some, some very talented yeah. space builders. Oh, yeah, I learned so much from them, and they welcomed uh, me with open arms, which felt awesome. Since, you know, I didn't have any other LEGO people to talk to over here. I was sitting all alone in Sweden, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Mm -hmm. So now if, if you want to transition to uh, maybe talking a little bit at once you kind of got more active in the community, how did you mm. come up with the idea for Swishable and kind of the history behind the site? Uh, yeah, I, Swishable wasn't really an idea, to be honest. I just I started working at a, another web agency as a... a well, project manager, and I was around a lot of techie people. They knew other things. And uh, I got very inspired by them and wanted to learn as well. So I figured, what can I do, basically, uh, with my very limited knowledge of tech and uh, web in general. Uh, so I decided to register a uh, domain name. I went to uh, Brothers Bricks uh, acronym, no, or no, uh, glossary. <laughs> and uh, yeah, exactly. Swooshable is the awesomest name ever. Uh, totally. Since I was a space, a space builder, everything is Swishable. So I chose that one, registered Swishable.com, and then I started hammering away at the things I thought were fun. Uh, and the first one was uh, something that I called the Fad Masher. <laughs> <laughs> uh, basically, it just placed uh, one fad next to another and then had a little question mark and said, hey, what happens when you mix these two together? Build something, show me. Uh, and, uh, well, the Brothers Brick picked it up, wrote a small article about it, and, uh, well, it almost became a fad in itself. <laughs> <laughs> the Fad Masher was a fad. Yeah, uh, I think there's an old thicker group called the Fad Masher as well. I don't know if it's <laughs> particularly uh, used anymore, but there, there was one. So, uh, and I know I watched the stats on that site. It was insane. I think we had, at one point, more than 500,000 you know, page views, which basically means more than 500,000 different fads mashed together. Really? Not all of them became, well, actual mocks, of course, but still, it was pretty fun to oh, see. Sorry, that's an impressive number, yeah. definitely. 
I, I was just blown away because this was just a small little thing that I didn't know what to do with. So <laughs> that inspired me to, you know, figure out, out some other things. And, and then, I, yeah, sorry. sure. For the fad masher, I remember, like, back in the day, uh, as it were, there were, <laughs> uh, like, you know, NASCAR, Ram. Uh, I, I'm just trying to think of all the, have you, like, kind of updated the, I, not that I, there are fads today. I'm not sure if you kind of concur with this. Do you think there are less fads now? Than there once was. Oh, that's a good question. Uh, you know what I'm uh, I think there are less fads today. Yeah, I think yeah. the community has become more fad-proof, as it were. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I think so. The major ones are more like sub-themes in the community these days, which is a completely different thing altogether. But back then, everybody had to build a pod vehicle, or uh, yeah, had to build a RAM or. Uh, Build a NASCAR or, K yeah. or a cave racer. Or so exactly, on. a cave racer, yeah. Oh, that was a, that's probably my favorite one. I like the cave racers. <laughs> definitely, definitely. And what if you built like a NASCAR like cave racer? Exactly, what happened? I did, I, I made one very nice and bad thing <laughs> at the same time. I included Bonktron, which oh. is this, uh, <laughs> very sexually themed uh, sub -genre. Of course. So we had a lot of tanks with, uh, well, well, yeah. on them. <laughs> exactly. But it was a lot of fun, and it inspired me to keep experimenting and learning more tech. So uh, that was the start of it. <laughs> so Swooshable kind of served as a canvas for you to a certain extent. It did. It really mm -hmm. did. It's where I learned or at least developed my uh, tech abilities that I have today. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. So after uh, Fad uh, Smasher, what were some of the other features you added to Smasher. this? Smasher. Master, yes. Fed master, sorry. <laughs> it's important. No, uh, I think the next one was probably the building school, uh, which turned out to be a pretty successful thing on its own as well, uh, but still a very difficult thing to maintain. Uh, but the building school, basically, uh, my intention with that was to create uh, an index of uh, awesome techniques and uh, instructions and so on and so forth. Uh, I think I was inspired by Dick for some reason on that one. Uh, anyway, so I started to compile all these resources, and it was a lot of work. It took me maybe two days to build a simple shell of the application, and then it took maybe, I don't know, five weeks to get uh, 70 indexed resources or something like that. But I, well, added them and then uh, put it out there. And people enjoyed it. People ex especially enjoyed the idea of it. Uh, that was a fun. That's kind of like a central repository for Lego building knowledge. Yeah, exactly. That was the main point, uh, main uh, thing I wanted to do. And in a way, that's, that has become the prevalent vision <laughs> of Swishable today, ever since I stopped working on these small, very self-contained apps. Uh, and then it's just trying to make it all more intertwined. Totally. Uh, but, but essentially, I just kept building those small apps for a mm -hmm. while. Uh, there's a lot of list, uh, a long list of them. Some of them are online, some of them aren't, some of them have evolved. <laughs> now, uh, a, a one thing I remember downloading back in, I believe it was 2008, back when I had a uh, eight or four gigabyte iPod Touch, was Minifix Scaler. Ah, nice one. Yes. So, what, what that? What's the history behind Minifix Scaler? I just have a little bit of a particular interest in this myself. I, I really enjoy the Minifix Scaler myself. It's still online, by the way, at swishable.com/minifixscaler. Okay, but it's not in the App Store anymore? It's not on, in the App Store. So basically, uh, the app was a, uh, well, an iOS version of the uh, thing, the, the actual web app that we have on Swishable. Uh, and I got the base of that code from Tim Gould, Tim the Gould in, in Australia. Uh, he, he wanted to, you know, demonstrate to the world that there is no such thing as minifix scale. Yeah. Uh, and he built a, a small visual tool to, to show that, you know, minifigs are really, really hefty <laughs> compared to your regular human. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, if you're, uh, so if the regular uh, human is about 180 centimeters, uh, 1 meter and 80 centimeters, I don't know what that is in inches and feet. Yeah, anyway, uh, the, minifig scale, uh, the minifig will be really, really heavy. So, so was the app almost like a pun? Like, uh, just like, there is no minifig scale, so minifig scaler uh, is a... Yeah, pretty much. It was Tim's name, so <laughs> we'll have to ask him. 
but pretty much. So I basically built an iOS version, put it out there to see how it went, and it was a lot of fun. I learned to build iOS apps, so I mean, I mean that's a win. <laughs> totally, but, totally. And so maybe you're, this is kind of a, a sort of an awesome thought, is that if you're really wanting to get into this broad array of fields, you should kind of come up with your own swooshable, right? And like oh, as yeah. a test canvas for you, you know, to just go out there and just do random cool stuff. Oh yeah, it's like you with your podcast. If you want to learn something, you have to do it. <laughs> that's just the best way. Get started. Try yeah, that's a really good something. point. Yeah, yeah. just kind of experiment with stuff and uh, figure out figure out the different things that work and don't work over the years. Uh, exactly. it's, it's fun to do that. <laughs> exactly. You won't be a bear in the brick uh, well at first, but after you know 100 episodes, you will be. So yeah, do it. Totally. totally. And now another swooshable feature I really enjoy is uh, the world. Is that like Lego events and just Lego stuff on a yeah. map? Yeah, basically the idea was that we had a, another AFL who came to me and said, hey, Linus, uh, and that was a great idea. It, it turned out to be really, really difficult, <laughs> really, really hard to maintain. But it's a great idea, idea and still is. So what we did is that I let him, Wise from you know the uh, building school, I let him be in charge of uh, compiling all of the data that we need to have, have, uh, have there all of the events, all of the locations, all of the lugs, and so on. And then I built a small uh, app that basically just plays these on, on a map uh, with all of what that entails. And it was very, very well up to date when we first launched it. We did some pretty extensive research into what lugs were active and not, and up until then we just had lug nets basically as the main list to go from, and it was not very updated as, at all. Uh, and then the major events, because back then there weren't that many. Two, three, four, five, ten. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, maybe if it's ten a year, perhaps. Yeah. We added all of them, uh, along with Lego stores, and I even found uh, the location for a uh, Lego factory in Mexico. I think it was it. <laughs> yes, outside of Monterey. Exactly. Uh, Monterey. Monterey. That's That's well. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's some awesome. deep research there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, so I added that one as well, and it was a lot of fun. We we kept it updated for a few years, but then I sort of gradually drifted off the uh, well into a gray age, and then it was uh, yeah, it, the information on there became more and more outdated. So back well a year ago, when I relaunched and rebuilt Swishable, I made sure to build proper importers from certain feeds and so on with Lego events. So that part is uh, automatically handled. Uh, right now, which is much better. And so where does it import the data from now? Uh, well, we have two primary sources. Uh, we have uh, the LAN, uh, okay. the Lego Ambassador Network, and we have uh, Brick Journals calendars. And okay. then we add to that a small number of very customized feeds uh, from different websites who primarily uh, host their own events, basically. Okay, and so I th you've just brought up like four or five interesting points that we can kind of delve into, but uh, the first one I really want to go down is uh, the redesign of Swooshable. So oh, yeah. it, it, it's exceptionally beautiful right now. Uh, what was that whole <laughs> redesign like? Oh, well, thank you. I, I Actually, I have to admit that I'm not <laughs> all too happy with it. Uh, yeah. I'm still working on it, always am. But no, the design was... Uh, it all started when I sort of drifted out of my gray age again and, uh, you know, uh, took an inventory of my websites, I have a few, and then discovered that Swooshable actually was still used quite a lot and that made me feel really bad <laughs> because I had been neglecting it for so long. So uh, then I made up a plan and decided to, yeah, if I have to run this website, I have to run it as a proper project. Uh, so I did that. I uh, first try to sketch out what we had at the moment, what worked, what didn't work, uh, what could I salvage, what couldn't I salvage, what did I have to rebuild, and then I started working on that one. It took me almost, well, I mean, eight months, I think, to export the data, build it in entirely new infrastructure, and so on and so forth. And then back this year, yeah, in January this year, 2015, I relaunched it as the Swooshable version 2 beta. Uh, yeah, exactly. And that's pretty much it. Uh, so I threw out a lot of uh, the stuff that weren't used and didn't work, such as I had a feed reader attempting to read Flickr groups. Uh, it had grown stale and didn't work. I had uh, an Amazon deal finder that tried to you know, give you the latest discounts, but Amazon had changed things, so it didn't work either. 
and the map was horribly outdated and uh, I could always add more things to the building school and so on and so forth. So uh, that's the main work. And so maybe now just like uh, I, I, I myself am an aspiring like um, I don't know web developer maybe is the term but uh, let's just throw out some uh, frameworks or like what, what was the site built in originally and then what did you use in the redesign to, to right. make it more awesome? Air well, let's, let's get nerdy. I, I love <laughs> okay. this stuff. This is my job. Go uh, down part, of it, part of it at least. Yeah. Okay. So basically, uh, stop me if I can get too technical. But basically, the site at first was a random bunch of experiments built with random things that I just enjoyed. I it was very hard to interconnect things and and yeah, it was just very very haphazard. That's the word, right? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically, it was built on WordPress. Uh, as uh, the base, but didn't utilize much of what WordPress could do. And to be honest, if you want to build a site like Swishable, you should not do it on WordPress. It's it's a great platform for blogs and basic content sites, but not if you want to build a, a proper functioning site that can do a lot of different things. Uh, so uh, these days, it's basically divided into two parts, you can say. Uh, there's the uh, site version that's over here, and then there's the assets that's over here. The most important part is probably the assets. You can say it's the backend, the infrastructure thingy. Uh, okay. Backend organizes all of the data. I have built a, a huge number of <laughs> different scripts that scrape sites and, and talks to APIs and you know compiles and cross-references cross -references things and, and so on. And the assets tries to maintain all of that. Uh, since it's we have we have we have a history with the site, we have to remember that. So it, it's yeah. basically built on PHP and MySQL. These days, you should what? probably do with Node, uh, which is a good thing to learn if you're uh, wanting to Node. Be a, yes. Yeah, if you want to be a web de web developer these days. Sure. Uh, so basically, uh, that's what it's built in right now. I might migrate in the future. I might not. We'll see. Uh, and I use Composer to keep track of external libraries. I use a thing called Propel, uh, which is a database interaction thingy that lets you talk to the database easier, uh, and so on and so forth. And, of course, a huge bunch of random stuff I built myself. And so in the redesign, was I understanding yeah. this correctly? You threw WordPress out the window? You were like, I no am. dice, sorry? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I completely built the infrastructure. WordPress is out the window. If you really developed into WordPress, you know that the core is getting better, but it's still very messy and it's not very robust. Sorry, WordPress yeah. fanboys. I am one to a certain extent, but it's not a good platform in that regard. So the site version is pretty much standalone PHP and MySQL, you could say. And then we have the site version, which is basically, before we did the redesign, we only had the site version. I added the asset version so I can do some advanced stuff in a good way. Uh, but the site version nowadays is built on Drupal, which is basically the same thing a as... A very nice Microsoft. content management system, I must add. Hey, you know it. Very good. Yeah, it's, a, it's a great content management system that lets you pretty quickly do awesome stuff. And uh, I've worked with it for a number of years, as well as WordPress and other things. But I decided on uh, Drupal because I knew I could easily interact with the asset version of, of Swooshable and pretty quickly get something out the door. Uh, so that was important to me since I have a, well, I, I want to build a lot, uh, build on Swooshable a lot, but I still have limited amounts of, of time. Sure. So it allows you for, like, quick iteration, you know? Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and so now another... Little... Sorry, Josh? Uh, I was just going to say, another feature I wanted to make sure we, we talked about here that I think is, is a really great feature of the site yeah. is the official uh, set instruction index. And so this is something I found over the years that having, having a place that uh, indexes old instructions is a big help because maybe if you go out and you know, get a lot of Craigslist or Garage Sale or something, you've got a bunch of these old sets but don't have the instructions, you think you've got some pieces for sets, you can go on there, find the instructions, and try to piece them back together, hopefully. So can you talk a little bit about how that works and what kind of where you've gotten some of those instructions from over the years, other sites that you use and things like that? Oh, yeah, of course, of course. Uh, that's a great example of what Swishable really wants to do and what it intends to, intends to be. Yeah, I started building that repository uh, out of the same pains, uh, with the same pains that you had. I wanted to find instructions for an old set. I can't remember which one, but I intended to sell it uh, because I, had, I knew I had the parts somewhere and I needed to... Re you know, be able to find the instructions to print them out. But I couldn't. I went to Brickset and I figured, hey, you know, 
uh, th that's a great team. He's a smart guy. He's probably fixed that because uh, I had seen some links there to Lego.com and Peron. Uh, but I couldn't find the set. And when I clicked on the link to Peron, uh, it just took me to, you know, no, oh, no, we can't find this thing. It's not here. So I reached uh, out to him uh, and basically asked, why haven't you done this? And he said, well, it's pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> So I decided, yeah, yeah, it is. But I can probably fix that. <laughs> I can probably do something about this. So, so I basically built a, a bunch of these uh, random scripts that I told you about before. One for each site that uh, you know crawls each and every site and, and tries to find out if this site has an, the instructions for a particular set. I think right now we index lego.com via Brickset. Uh, uh, he shares the data, very kind of him. Uh, we index brickinstructions.com, we index letsbuildagain.com, that's a very small site, but they have some sets that aren't available somewhere else. We index brick.args.com, mainly because they have good PDF versions, many, many sets, and we index Peron, of course, uh, that's a, a classic, and we index, oh, brickfactory.info. Mm -hmm. <laughs> .info. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. yeah, that's the one I was more familiar with as far as, you know, instructions. I, I haven't used it in several years, actually, but I know uh, several years ago when I was needing instructions for a lot of sets, I uh, that's the site that I, I think I use the most. Yeah, it's a great site when it comes to older instructions. It's even better than uh, Piran, which, is, which was my go-to site for all these instructions. Uh, the only problem with that site is it's... it's so weirdly <laughs> built. <laughs> yeah, the design I, is I not great. <laughs> I shudder even talking about it. But yeah, it's so weird, weird, built, weirdly built, and it hasn't been updated in many years, except for the content. Content is constantly updated and very, very excellent. Uh, but basically, it consists of several frame sets uh, which open different pages with JavaScript and, and so on. And you can't even deep link to specific instructions. So, you know, I, I really want to say, hey, go to brickfactory.info slash... Uh, 55, 88, uh, dash 1, and you'll see this uh, set instructions. But, but I can't. I can't. So I have to crawl their site in an extremely weird way and even uh, download all of the individual image links. Not save the images, mind you, but I download each and every link to each image. And then I had to build a, a special image sh shower on Swootable so that people could easily find those images. It's really, really weird. And, and see, that's why people are going to be looking at your little app and not at whatever dot info. <laughs> so, yeah, there you go. Competitive yeah, it's true. Advantage. It's true, it's true. But I, I, I sort of feel bad about it at the same time because it's such a great site with such great content. Well, the site isn't great, but the content is awesome, and they have done an amazing job maintaining it over the years. So I, re I would rather, much rather send the people there, but yeah. That's totally. Busy. And so uh, it, when Hugh posted about it on Brickset, I was yeah. like, Swooshable what? <laughs> and then, uh, not like I didn't know what Swooshable was, but I was like, yo, like that's awesome. You know, like when you see one of your friends, like, uh, I don't know, get like a cool job or something, and you're like, that's awesome, like go Swooshable. Yeah. Like, so what was it like working with you? Was it like a, was it like a nice back and forth there, and you were like, uh, want to add this to the side? And he was like, okay. No, it was very straightforward. He's, a, he's such an easygoing guy, as you know. I've seen... Oh, uh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I know that you've interviewed him as well. Uh, cool. No, no, it was really straightforward. I basically just talked to him a bit and asked, hey, I'm doing this. Do you want the data? <laughs> uh, I can provide it to you. And I, he said, yeah, sure, why not? That's excellent. Do it. So I built a small endpoint for him uh, so that he could make uh, calls to it. And uh, I return whatever updated data I have and he gets it, and then he implements it on his site. That's awesome. It's kind of a cross AFL site collaboration that I think we need to see more of, you know? Totally agree. I totally agree. Uh, I think Swooshable is about to get there. Uh, I'm trying to collect a lot of data since I figure that's pretty much what happens, needs to be done in the community, and then I want to make it all accessible, as accessible as I can. Uh, sure. uh, I have a lot of infrastructure work before we can get there uh, completely, but we're on our way, so yeah. Totally. And now, jumping back into the design of Swooshable, or the redesign, uh, were there any inspirations as far as, like, color palette, logo, maybe talk about all of that good stuff? Oh, of course, of course. Uh, the logo was made by a very talented colleague of mine who uh, well, works at my company <laughs> right here. Uh, it's the, uh, uh, it is the finger hinge in a, in a uh, very... 
stylistic manner. The, it's the finger hinge. hinge. Yeah, the finger hinge. No, like that. The, the finger hinge is my favorite piece of all time. It's so versatile, and I use it in almost every build I make. I I even have it tattooed on my arm. That's here. awesome. I don't know, if you see, but it's there. yeah. <laughs> uh, so he he liked that tattoo, and he he liked the piece as well. So he basically just said, "Hey, is it okay if I make a logo with this one?" I said, "Yeah, have fun with it. Go with it." And so he designed that, and uh, I'm really really happy how it turned out. Uh, oh. Very proud of that one. And well, as far as the design goes, I'm mainly uh, an interaction designer or a uh, layouter and so on. So I can do good layouts <laughs> that I know are pretty usable, and I can iterate over them and I can improve on them. I am learning <laughs> when it comes to uh, typography and when it comes to colors. I enjoy it a great deal, but it has never been a main focus of mine. So I took a lot of inspiration from a Mailchimp's color palette, uh, palette, palette, uh, and uh, yeah, we'll basically copy those colors, adjusted them, and then use them in different ways. <laughs> and now okay. we're starting to get somewhere. And, and so I, I like it because it has those pops of like sort of uh, you know just sort of like a oh that's a cool color kind of thought you know. Yeah, I tried to keep it consistent because, as I said, mainly an interaction thing. Uh, but I wanted to mainly keep the blue and the yellow as some, something of a an interaction color, and the other as some fun things, you know. But as I said, I, I'm still working on that one. I'm not. Uh, it's not where it should be. No, I can do a lot better. So, and that will be done in the future. Totally. Totally. Mm -hmm. And another cool feature of the site is your all of the contributors that you have there. I was looking at the site just now here, and uh, according to the site, you have 171 contributors right now, which is yeah. a lot of people uh, that have contributed stuff over the years, I'm sure. So if you can talk about how that works and what, what some of the stuff people have contributed over the years. Oh, of course. Uh, well, basically, um, the contributor list is my attempt to keep track of everyone who has done things that I have indexed on the site. Uh, it's not that all of these people have talked to me individually and said, hey, uh, this thing. It's, it can be that I have found it and added it and then just still want to thank them for doing awesome stuff and then added them and you know check them up online and, and uh, so on and so forth. But there have been a lot of contributions where people have sent in things and I am so extremely grateful for that. It has made, made uh, maintaining the uh, building school and world and everything a lot easier and we have done a lot of fun things. Like Tim and his minifig scaler, that was so fun uh, and so great. I re he basically just sent me the source code of his uh, his prototype, and then I polished it up and added some new features, and then <laughs> we were good to go. And then later on, it became it became an iOS app, and that's pretty awesome <laughs> that that actually can happen. Uh, but yeah, so that that's the way it generally goes. Uh, that's awesome. Recently, I've uh, collaborated with uh, Ryan Howarder. I think his name is pronounced Ryan Howarder. You betcha. Uh, we call him the color guy because he's the color guy. Uh, Does he have the one that has like, the, the Flickr photo stream brick color stream or something like that? Yeah, that's the guy. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, his mission in life, or at least so far in life, has been to compile a cross-reference uh, with all the, LEGO col uh, the colors that LEGO has ever produced. And he's even produced this Flickr color stream where uh, he's taken pictures of the, the, the bricks. <laughs> so you can actually look at them and then see where, what they look like, which is an amazing feat because there have been so many colors, many more than you, you think. So with his data uh, and his collaboration and his inspiration, uh, we built a small thing called the Color Schemer because graphic designers have tools that let them test color th uh, schemes before they build stuff. <laughs> so I figured, hey, we could try building one with the uh, Lego stuff as well. And we did. And that was fun. Mm. And so then it allows you to kind of like see what does dark orange look like against sand green, right? Is that the, the kind of idea there? That's the main idea, yeah. And then we also add a lot of data, uh, well, from Ryan's work, uh, of course. Uh, yeah, you know, on well, Lego references this color as blah blah blah, and Bricksets references this color as blah blah blah. No, Bricklink, sorry, not Brickset. Brickset that uses Lego's denominations, and uh, and so on and so forth. And that's awesome, and a lot of fun. And that's like a perfect swooshable project because it takes like someone's, uh, I guess, like a lot of labor or a labor of love, you know, and then you kind of, you're able to sort of take the data and then beautify it and give it uh, to the world <laughs> in like one deliverable, you know? 
Yeah, exactly. It is. That, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. I use it. So mm -hmm. yeah, uh, we have it right here. Uh, if you want to show it, shall we? Go for it. Sure. Actually, David, this would maybe be a good time to maybe uh, for those of uh, the viewers out there watching, sort of get a, like a, a look of Swooshable. We'll do a the the site owner's own tour. Yeah, sure. Let's do that. Uh, how should we do this? Should, uh, can I take control of what we can see? Yes, you should be able to screen share. So if you put your your mouse on the uh, over your hangout box there on the left, there's a little uh, green box with an arrow in it that says screen share. Okay, I'm, doing, I'm going to do everything on my screen right now so you'll see everything. Hey, Whoa. can you see this? Uh. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's okay, can you see this? There you go, yes. <laughs> okay, awesome. So basically, this is what we call the color schemer. It is divided into panes. We have blue to the left, we have yellow in the middle, and you have green to the right, uh, to, at the right. You can add more panes by pressing the plus sign over here, like so, and then we get white as well. Now, if you wanted to change a color in, in one pane, you can press this button over here, and then you can select a pane here, or select a color, neon green, for instance, and it looks like that. Whoop. And if we want to remove this pane, we can just press that button. We have several different palette, palettes you can use. We have solid colors, we have transparent color, pearl colors, chrome colors, and so on and so forth. And you can even, uh, we built a pretty decent search as well. That was a pretty tricky thing to get working. We can search for, for instance, blue. And then we search across all of the different denominations and see if it contains the word blue somewhere. <laughs> and then we show <laughs> wow. it there. Uh, it came up when Zach told me he uh, wanted uh, to search for tan, for instance. Tan was a very difficult, a different, a difficult color to find since it's solid brick yellow, sand yellow, titanium metallic, and Model X buff. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's basically the way it goes. And then you can choose to see only the colors or the images from brick color stream, and you can see more information by pressing this button here. And if you want to say thanks to Ryan for all of this, his work, you can press this button here, and it says, go to go thank Ryan and go thank Brick College Stream. That is, uh, that is beyond slick. I that would is, guess yeah. what the phrase is. Let's return and let's do stop doing this thing here. There you go. Yeah, that's awesome thing. I'm glad you could show that to us there. That's <laughs> that, <made it> work. <laughs> that is uh, that is ridiculousness. Uh, that's the only thing I can say. I don't uh, we, we, we have, we've had good comments on it, and uh, I actually found that I enjoy using it a lot as well. So uh, that's a good start, I think. <laughs> so really, this is like, so if someone is like an AFO or they're just getting into the hobby, you could basically just say, hey, go to Swooshable, and then oh, yeah. pull up the building school, and then, oh, once you figure out what techniques you want to use, why don't you look at the color chart and figure out a color scheme, and then why don't you uh, go and figure out if there's an event near you that you can display your creation at. I mean, and you can just keep going because there are way more than those few examples I listed. So yeah, that's the plan. That's what Swooshable is turning out to be, and I, I really enjoy that because I get kicks out of watching great creations, and and so I, if I can in any way facilitate making those, then hey, I win as well. <laughs> totally, totally. Mm -hmm. And now, uh, bringing it back to something we mentioned earlier, we mentioned once or twice here uh, on the episode so far the uh, LAN site, the LEGO Ambassador Network website. And there are uh, a couple of overlaps between Swishable and the LAN site, some of the things they do. they got like a map with some events and stuff. So uh, mm -hmm. it'd be interesting to get uh, your thoughts on what you think of the, the LAN site and kind of a, if you have any recommendations for improvements they could do over there. I'm sure LEGO would love to hear from fans on uh, what they could do better over there maybe. <laughs> Have uh, you ever accessed the back end of the land? Uh, just to, before we kind of go into it, so like, have you ever like lo logged in and like looked at all the forums and stuff? No. Okay, I so. have not logged in, but I I'm not a Lego ambassador myself. Okay. okay. <laughs> but I have in the uh, back end. I have uh, did some. I, I, well, I have had a look at the source code that I can see, <laughs> so I know. <laughs> <laughs> but only the front end, of course. So, so uh, I know sort of what it's all about and where. Well, I, I can see tendencies of where it's going. And, and I have to say, I love the land uh, site. I love the Lego Ambassador Network. Uh, it's such a great, 
you know, uh, thing for Lego to have all, uh, to, to put to get together a centralized resource for AFOLS and for them as well. And I would love it if they kept developing the site and basically took over that function from uh, from me, from Sociable. That would be awesome because much of the data that I display is from there. Uh, that said, I'm not sure they will, uh, to be honest. Uh, yeah. At least not do the things that I see has to be done. <laughs> you see, you know, some warning warning points maybe. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, I'm not going to go into how Lego usually run their projects. Uh, they have their ups and they have the, their downs, of course. It's a company that's usual. I do believe that they will be pretty restrictive, but with sharing their data in a structured format, <laughs> such as through an API or so on. You can actually get to all of the events, for instance, by uh, well looking at source code. I probably shouldn't say that, but you can, and it's not a particularly good way to build things. Uh, that's how I get the events from uh, Lego Land, for instance. Uh, <laughs> but uh, if they only publicize that API, you could do some really fun things with it. So I, I hope that's uh, happening. Uh, I really do. I also hope that they add some minor, smaller things that aren't there. But as long as we get a centralized resource, that that's awesome. And I think. Plan is the best place to do it, to be honest. Uh, I really do. Um, but yeah, I'm uh, the jury's still out on land for me. So I, I'm uh, patiently awaiting to see what they're trying to do with the site, and then I'll either uh, shut down World and refer people to uh, land, or I'll uh, rebuild World <laughs> and add the features <laughs> I think is uh, are needed. So we'll see where it goes. Uh, it, that part of the site is currently on hold for me until I know where the land goes. And so what you point out is kind of a, that's like a web best practices, right? It's like, so yeah. you have all this data and you want to like package it and deliver it to the world so that other people can do cool stuff with it as oh, easily yeah. as possible? Yeah, that, that, I really think that's a thing that we need to do in the LEGO community. We really need to start collaborating with the data. We can't have contained silos anymore. We can't. We really can't. We need to evolve as a community. And the best way to do that is by sharing whatever data we can, we have, and, and so on. Brickset is awesome. They do this lovely. Uh, Bricklink does, but they also at the same time say, you can't use our data. So oh, um, I remember that letter? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So uh, I don't see what we can do that but there. But, but Rebrickable is also a good site. They uh, share their data to the left and to the right, and I love them for that. So, uh, so we'll see. We'll see. And so uh, as far as, like, uh, I, I know from, uh, I, I believe I was speaking with a representative of the, the community and an events and engagement team about, uh, like, what was the land, who was it made by, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was some development agency, like, in Canada, and so it's like an out-of-house project, and it's yeah. uh, it's something that I guess they're not able to sort of uh, iterate on themselves. Like they have to like meet with a person, and then that person has to go, and I'm sure it's on the clock, and it's really expensive to make changes. And so I guess all of this leads to: uh, Do you think if Swooshable and Lan had like a bastard child, it would just be like the the only Lego site you ever had to pay attention to? Uh, no, we still have the community, of course. <laughs> so no, I don't think that. <laughs> no, I, I really believe that we should have a pretty self-contained silos that do one thing and do it really, really well. Uh, we'll see how that goes. I mean, Swooshable isn't exactly that at all. <laughs> but <laughs> as long as we, we try to go there, uh, then we, we're on the right track at least. So no, I don't think that's the only site we would ever use. No, not at all. I, I have some insight into... Um, how they run some of their projects, not in a very deep fashion, but I've been talking to some representative from, representatives from, from LEGO as well. I've been on a workshop uh, with them. Uh, they saw Swooshable back in the days. <laughs> yes. uh, and and uh, they liked it and they wanted to, uh, they invited me over to have a chat. Uh, so we sat down, a couple of guys, uh, maybe one girl if we were lucky. Uh, and talked about the uh, web stuff and how to, what, what you could do with it and, and so on and so forth. And they especially asked a lot of questions about the uh, world and how we did those things. So I like to think that I planted a seed there. <laughs> that somehow, a, little, a little kernel of, uh, you know. Yeah. Just, I, don't, I don't want to take the credit at all. Uh, they've no, done an amazing job. But, but, but 
it's evident that they were thinking about this and that they tried to do the best they can. The way they run their web pro projects by outsourcing many of them are, mm -hmm. is problematic. It's expensive and uh, it and, and not something that they that they're essentially ready to cancel committed to. No, exactly. They're ready yeah. to cancel it at any time, and that's dangerous in my mind. Now, I don't know if you have any other insights into like other Lego web presences, but I, I know that Ideas, uh, the Ideas site, was built by the same developer as the Land site, mm -hmm. and uh, they're both hosted on Amazon Web Service. And then, if you look at like Lego.com itself, is actually I think it's hosted in Denmark, I believe, like in Billund. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so is Lego itself ho like a in-house like product like Lego.com like the shop at home? Or I, are they like just kind of? Yeah, I don't know the technical details on that one. <laughs> I think yeah. they don't share those with the, anyone. But what from what you're saying, it sounds mm -hmm. like they're hosting their own Lego site and maybe the shop part in-house uh, ideas and and other things that perhaps need to be on a different iteration sch uh, schedule or so on and so forth or is may, requires different technology stacks or so on, they're probably built, uh, well, outsourced. Totally. I know that ideas was, uh, well, I talked to Peter Esperson, I think his name was, uh, before uh, a few year, a year or so, before half a year maybe, before uh, ideas was launched as Kuzo. Mm -hmm. And uh, he told me about the idea uh, and uh, said that they wanted to try it and are trying to iterate on it and so on and so forth. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, so I, I guess here's the golden question. Uh, uh, Linus, if a web developer such as yourself were to be offered a position in Billund as a, uh, you know, a developer for maybe ideas and the LAN and mm -hmm. uh, whatever else they had for you, would you say, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. And uh, if so, why? And if no, why? I would probably not take the job, to be honest. Yeah. I wouldn't. Uh, I'm. I actually don't consider myself a developer. I have technical skills. I know how to use them, and it's a big part of my job. But I'm not primarily a developer. I'm mainly a communicator. So I wouldn't take a job as a developer. No chance at all. But. Okay. I also don't like mixing hobby, <laughs> hobbies with, uh, with work. And Billund, to be honest, is quite a, a dreary place to live. <laughs> and the job <laughs> yes. will probably require relocation. So no, I would not take the job. If I could work from home uh, with anything that they had to offer, <laughs> it would be <laughs> as some sort of community guy or, or uh, maybe just sourcing data or, or being a strategist or, or whatever. Uh, I could even be a consultant. That's fine. Community <laughs> strategist consultant, Linus Bowman. Yes, that's the one. I'll be that. No, okay, but, but, but we're not like, doing things that we don't know how to do, and we're not moving to a small town in rural Denmark. That's what we're not doing. <laughs> no, exactly. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Good. I was. Uh, I actually was interviewed for a, a position as a community liaison or something for a site called uh, Rebrick, back when it was about to. Uh, to launch. Uh, I made it pretty far in, in the interview process, I think. Uh, maybe three candidates left or so. I didn't get the job in the end, and I'm pretty happy that I didn't uh, because of all the previously stated reasons. Uh, Lego seems like a, an excellent place to work, but I think I'm not the best fit for them in that capacity, at least. I feel you, I feel you. And, and just a quick nitpick for Rebrick, do you think it's a little like not cool of Lego to put brick in the name of one of their own sites. Yes. I've had this discussion with a lot of people at conventions. Like, seriously, Lego? Like, really? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we, uh, we, they had an advisory board or something uh, uh, where they had a lot of beta, te beta testers that could see the site before it was launched. Were you guys on it? Uh, I don't think so. I, I know I knew a couple of people that were, though. I remember back at the time. Yeah, I was on it. Uh, but uh, that was a hot debate, especially coming from the fans. Uh, I don't mind it at all, to be honest. I don't care. <laughs> but uh, I can see where the problem lies. Totally. Mm -hmm. So now, uh, for people who might be interested have followed Swishable for you know maybe several years and enjoy uh, the site there, do you have any plans for the future with it as far as big things you're, you're hoping to add in the, in the near future here? Or what are some, some plans you have for Swishable? 
Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm working on Swooshable constantly, uh, all the time, basically. I try to put in at least four hours a week. Sometimes it, it gets more. I have I work a lot, and I have family and friends and other hobbies, hobbies and stuff, but I still try to work on Swooshable. So, yeah, of course, I'm constantly working on things uh, that needs to be done. I have a to-do list with about 300 to-dos or 500 to-dos. <laughs> it's huge of varying complexity. Uh, I never get done. But my main focus right now is actually building... Well, turning the site into the building school it should be. Uh, I'm working on right now, uh, well, something sort of like what I did with the instructions, but for individual Lego pieces, which has been a, a pretty daunting task in itself. Uh, Rebrickable and Brickseb and Bricklink all have pretty good, great references, uh, to be honest. You can look up pieces and see what they are there, uh, what they look like, and so on. But I need more data. I need to know what a brick, where I can find it in, in Lego Digital Designer and compare it to LDRAW and, and see what it, the idea is on the Rebrickable compared to Bricklink and, well, Lego's official idea, which Brickset uses, and so on and so forth. I want it to be the ultimate reference. So basically what I'm doing right now is trying to compile all, all of that data and, 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 you know, mash it all together and see what comes out. Uh, so I've deconstructed the entirety of LEGO Digi Digital Designer, uh, so I know how that software works now, and I've imported and built scrapers, scripts, basically. Uh, you know, the asset part of Swooshable. It can handle LEGO Digital Designer now. So, so uh, yeah. I have, yeah, it can. So I've imported all of the data I could extract from there, and I, well, Brickset also uh, makes their piece list available, which is a, good, a great help. They have official LEGO ideas there. And uh, uh, between those two sources, I have a, a good grasp of uh, what pieces LEGO actually has available uh, currently, so to speak. But they still hasn't managed to fix all of many old pieces, which is where I need to cross-reference to uh, Bricklink, uh, Rebrickable, all of those sites, and see what uh, drops out. And as well, LDRAW, of course. Uh, my plan is basically to, at first, <laughs> build a repository that says, hey, if you're in LVD or in LDRAW, you can find the piece here. Hey, if you're building with mechabricks.com, the piece is available, or it's not. And then, after I have that in place, I really, really want to rebuild the entire uh, building school section. What we have there is basically what, we, what I had since 2000, whenever, whenever it started. Uh, but I need to rebuild it, uh, make it more up-to-date, and, well, better in general. We have a small section called Snot's uh, Search Engine. So you can find Snot techniques uh, based on what angle you need to use and, and how, well, roughly how big it should be. I want to build that, but for joints and for uh, circles and for uh, offsetting and so on and so forth. And I want to reference all of the pieces. Uh, so that's why I'm doing it in this order. And after that, I think it's time to uh, rewrite Digier Angeris. A legendary guide, the uh, unofficial advanced Lego building techniques guide. Uh, it's a which is a PDF that has spread throughout the community, and is sometimes heard of and often pops up in different conversations. And I think the community deserves a new version of that. So I intend to do that after I put together <laughs> the other the online resource. So yeah, that's the that's the uh, closest future, and I that's where Sociable is going presently. Currently, that's where I'm focusing my efforts. And so really it's like you're kind of getting down to the, the nitty-gritty of uh, the LEGO world because if you like really think about it, I guess uh, LEGO brick is like the smallest divisible unit in the world of LEGO. And so then LEGO bricks come together and they make a LEGO building technique. And then a series of techniques assembled is a set or a creation. And so now you are tackling the kernel of the, all of the LEGO fan universe or something like that. I love that analogy. <laughs> it's excellent. Yeah, that's what I'm it's doing. a beautiful thought, I think. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's perfect. That's what I'm doing. That's awesome. Yeah. We'll, we'll see uh, how it goes and what actually pops out, but that's the intention, at least. It, as I said, all of this is experimentation, and I'm just having fun with it, and then we'll see where it goes. And hopefully it'll be useful. Uh, oh, by the way, feedback, bugs, bug reports, anything, uh, hit me. I love that. But an email away. That's yeah, but an email away. Hello yep. at swishable.com. <laughs> got it. There you go, yeah. So if people have any feedback or anything on the site, feel free to send it. And yeah, it sounds like you've got some really cool stuff, you know, coming down the pipeline here for the site, along with all the other cool features that are already over there. So 
know, if people haven't checked out Swishable, I uh, definitely encourage you to do that. And I'll make sure to put a link to that in the description of the video here. Thanks. And something I wanted to make sure we covered was uh, some of your builds. We haven't had a chance to talk about uh, many of your builds here so far. So uh, you do obviously build with the, the physical brick along with uh, running several websites as well. Uh, one that I thought was really cool that I think goes well with our conversation we've had a lot here about the, the WordPress and design here is your, your Lego WordPress logo. So oh, if yeah. you want to talk about this build a little bit and what inspired you for this? This one? Uh, if you yes, yeah, yeah, there you go. Oh, no, I'm in, uh, I'm in my office at the moment, and I have it here to show potential clients. So, yeah, uh, basically, I, I work as a web, a web developer. <laughs> and uh, one of the thing is that being the Lego guy, as I'm sure you two are as well, is an excellent branding tool. I, I work in a creative industry, and people just love it. Uh, they love that I have a Lego piece on my arm, and they love that I build Lego websites, and they love that I build with Lego. So I decided that, you know, as a sort of a promotion or, or something, I could build the WordPress logo since some of our sites, not all of them, are built uh, using WordPress. Uh, so I did. I created instructions for them. Uh, I learned how to create instructions to, in order to do this, uh, which is tricky, by the way. Man, i got to fix that, that one as well. Anyway, uh, so, uh, so uh, that's basically how it, how it went. And now we have it standing in our office, and people just enjoy it. I, sent, uh, I intend to send out a few kits to some customers and some uh, friends, and that's it. The creator of WordPress, Matt Smullenbeg, yeah, uh, he retweeted my image of, <laughs> of me holding the WordPress logo like this. Uh, and he, so he enjoyed it as well, and that's fun. Yeah. Like Geek Love or something like that? That's yeah, awesome. exactly. <laughs> Very so cool. that, that's a lot of fun. I, I, yeah. I, I enjoy uh, I more and more as I get older. I enjoy building for other people that are not AFOLs more than I build building enjoy building for AFOLs. Uh, I discover because when you're building for AFOLs, it's a lot about using the latest technique and so on and so forth. But that's that can be quite detrimental when you intend to build for a uh, another audience of regular, you know, quotation marks people. Totally. They they want to see the they want to know the brick feeling, and that's why well, the logo is very basic. Uh, it's it's the techniques used are very basic. It's just bricks on top of each other. But they and it's like when AFOLs are building for AFOLs, they, they it's almost like a bunch of artists, like a you know, kind of descending into like a pit of just art mm -hmm. criticism. And there's and you know, it's just like, oh well, I don't think the conceptual backing for your, your creates like you know, the actual like the ethos of it or like what it actually means doesn't really matter. It's just like what techniques did you use and what do you want it to mean? I don't, so yeah, building for just normal people, there is a lot of beauty in that. I've yeah. found that too. And that's, that's for, for me, I think you find the, the biggest rewards there as well. It, it's the most fun, uh, and you know you can use the awesome techniques that you used, but you really need to ensure that the subject you're uh, building, such as a logo, uh, actually makes sense. You know, I can build an awesome spaceship, spaceship and swoosh it around for myself, and I can you know, show it to you guys on video, and you will enjoy the swooshing qualities, and you will enjoy that I used finger hinges with the special technique thingy there, and so on and so forth. But you know, regular people don't care about that. They just, hey, OK, that's cool. Yay. Yeah, that's and, nice. And, and I like that. <laughs> I really enjoy cool. that. And a, another really great build that you've done, I think this is your most recent build, is the, I think it's the Vroom Fast, I believe, is it's, and you've got some, some cool photos. The photo you have over here, you kind of took it outside and took some photos on, like, some sand kind of uh, area, and so it was pretty cool here. We'll talk a little bit about this build. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, it, it goes broom and it's fast, and that's why I call uh -huh. it the broom fast. <laughs> <laughs> you keep it simple, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Keep it simple. Uh, no, it basically, it was my first build in... Uh, in some time, so I had I had a, good, a lot of fun with it. I put together a small Lego studio in my <laughs> cellar storage unit. <laughs> I have a small uh, table where I can sit and build, and I haven't been able to do that for so long. So I really enjoy that. Oh yeah, there it is. That's the back of it. <laughs> yeah, so nice. Here you go. So yeah, this is. So you've got some interesting kind of the the rectangular, almost square shapes throughout it. There. Uh, what yeah. was that design like for you? Uh, basically, when, when I build uh, mocks, I just do freestyle building. I don't plan too much ahead. I didn't even know that this was about to be a car, to be honest. <laughs> so I, I had these uh, awesome wheels uh, lying next to me and said, eh, maybe I'll use those. Uh, and then I did. So what you're looking at is the back, the back part of it. And I think that's the part I... Uh, yeah, I wanted to basically build... As I built this thing, it basically became a 
car that was obviously very fast and it was supposed to go uh, off-road and uh, yeah, that's <laughs> pretty much how it went from there. And then if you look at the front side, I, I'm not sure, Josh, if you could pull up the, a, a front picture, but I noticed some lovely, uh, and I'm always going to get the color wrong, I think olive green cheese slopes uh, in an artfully uh, arranged pattern. Is this correct? Oh, yeah, olive green uh, from a pick brick cup. <laughs> I yes. bought both those, and I didn't know what to do with them, so I uh, tried them, and they worked. That's they the were on the walls all over the world. I think, what was it, last year at mm -hmm. some point? or. Dude, that's that's entirely possible. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> it's a it's a beautiful a beautiful color, and I like seeing uses like that because it just sort of has like a cool texture plus a cool color. So yeah, yeah, I'm trying to experiment a lot with color grouping and so on and so forth. And of course, I you know tried to look at brick color stream before I did this, uh, which eventually led to the color schemer. But yeah, I, I enjoy that color as well. I think it should be used a lot more. So people, totally, all those new Beautiful kind of earthy tones. They're all yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Oh yeah, you can build really nitty gritty things with them, or gritty things. I mean, that look very realistic. You got it. And I like your cellar building area as well. Very <laughs> nice. So is that like you have an, a, an apartment, and then in the basement or something, you have like a storage closet? Uh, yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it. I'm moving in a month, so I've had to pack down all of my bricks, and then, but I will get a similar storage unit in my next apartment, okay. which is slightly larger overall, so uh, I will rebuild my uh, Lego building space there. <laughs> it's very, very nice. nice. It, it's, a, it's a lovely way to you know, get some peace and quiet and just get away from everything and from the apartment. And so I see in the background of the photo that you have, uh, it's like a mesh wall uh, against one side of the little storage cubicle in the basement. So if yeah. someone like walks into the area, can they hear like, Shh, you know, oh, yeah. you? <laughs> and if, awesome. they, if they walk into their own storage units, they can also see me. <laughs> That's awesome. That people is... have walked by and enjoyed it. I also know that I've donated a few pieces to other people's uh, storage units because I've dropped them. <laughs> 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 to go like, knock on their door, hey, excuse me, could you let me into your unit next to me? I'm sorry, I, I was building Lego in my storage. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I figured it's a present for the kids, you know. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, but I, I really, uh, if you have the uh, ability to get a dedicated workspace, uh, especially one that you can close the door to, I really encourage it. I have It has done so much for me rediscovering my hobby again. Totally, totally. Mm -hmm. Now, transitioning back to, to some of the LEGO website-related stuff, uh, I think an interesting question for you with all of the stuff you've done with several websites over the years is, if you could go out and create uh, your dream LEGO fan site with just an unlimited amount of resources, money, whatever it could be, uh, what would that site look like? <laughs> yeah, well, um, right now we have a very gaping hole in our community, and that is a, an excellent photo sharing site that can host all of the work that we, we create and that we know will stay there forever and we know will cater to our needs, uh, but it's not there. Brickshelf is Brickshelf and mock pages, it's not that. And, and Flickr, well, you know how Flickr, the way Flickr is going. And we don't need Marissa Meyer, am I right? <laughs> you are right. Uh, no, but we don't even have notes anymore on Flickr, which is, well, they were the, they were a godsend to the community. Uh, so basically, I, I, my dream site at the moment would fill that hole. We, we would build the uh, most awesome LEGO photo, uh, photo host ever. We could build notes, we could have our, our own community, and so on and so forth. It would be reliable, it would never disappear, et cetera, et cetera. The thing is that, is that it would be, uh, have, it would have to have a very sustainable business model in order for it to stick around for a long time. It would need to keep up with current tech trends. It would need to listen to the evolving needs of the community, never stagnate. Uh, and uh, that is tricky to do, really tricky. In a, and in addition to that, we as a community would have to basically at the same time decide that we would uh, all jump ship from Flickr or move Brickshop or whatever into this new awesome Lego site, TM. Uh, and and uh, <laughs> you know, bring the community with us because that's, in the end, that is, in the end, what will make or break the site, if people use it or not and if the community will use it as its own or not. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a huge undertaking. It would it require a budget. It would require a business plan. It would require great technical jobs and a team, a dedicated team. Probably some people who would try to make this, turn this into a business. 
and you know that is tricky to put together but there is an opportunity and there is a need and I hope someone will fill it I doubt doubt it but I hope <laughs> Yeah, because like you mentioned about everyone jumping ship, it's like the really only thing that, like, the reason Flickr is what it is now is because it does have that critical mass of, like, Lego fans. So, yeah, it, you would have to have, like, a consensus building kind of event beyond, like, I, I know when Flickr does a redesign, people always are, oh, well, we're leaving Flickr, man. Like, we're jumping. But, like, if Flickr was to suddenly become absolutely unusable for whatever our purposes are, then I think you might have that consensus building event to kind of rally people together. And oh yeah, sort of but, but the problem is that the, if that happens now, then people would just jump to whatever ship floats their boat. Uh, yeah, okay, that fits their <laughs> even the best <laughs> at the yes. moment, you know. And that, that could be the next picture. That's uh, and then we would thrive there for a few years, and then you know the same thing would happen again. And uh, it would be nice not to have that. Uh, so yeah. One day. One day, one day we will. That's why I love LAN. That's why I love the LEGO Ambassador Network, because basically this is the first time for ever, to be honest, since we had a somewhat uh, organized uh, collection of uh, different LEGO communities. And these people, if they decided to, you know, if, if someone somewhere thought of the idea and, and went to them, and then they decided to, okay, can I, guys, can I get you all behind this? Can you try to, you know, transfer this into your community and so on and so forth then we, then we have a really solid case to do this but still it needs to be done and it would take some time and now just to elaborate for those uh, that don't know what Rebrickable is it, it, it is like a, a mock sharing site to a certain extent but well, what's the ethos of it like an aggregator uh, something like that uh, you're talking about Rebrickable and not Rebrick Rebrick. Oh yes, that's always that trips me up as well. Rebrick. Yes, yes. Rebrick. Okay, the, the Lego site. The Lego site. Yeah. Okay. So Rebrick is a site made by the Lego Group, the company. Uh, they stand behind it, and it's their first real official foray into um, their own social media, if you will. Uh, basically, it's a site where people can share interesting things about Lego usually models that they found on the internet. So it's not a photo sharing site, it's not a uh, news feed, it's just uh, uh, basically a dig clone, but Lego focused, I would say, something like that. That's a good way to put it, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it, it has its niches and I know it's, it's used, but it wouldn't feel fill this need at all. Yep, yep, it is, that is a different need entirely. Yep. Okay, that, yeah, that's really cool. So I, I think that idea for a site would be awesome. And like you said, you know, if you just need like a team of people dedicated uh, to working on something like mm -hmm. that. But uh, we'll, we'll see if that comes down the line at some point because, yeah, yeah Flickr, I think, is people are getting, you know, more annoyed with it over the years. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah we will jump ship eventually. That's for sure. The question is to where. Uh, if someone decides to do this, I'm looking at you, Internet, then be sure that you start uh, in the right end. You don't start by building the site. You start by uh, ensuring that the community will use it. Talk to the people at LEGO LAN Network, uh, or the LAN, uh, and then go from there. Ensure that you have their full cooperation and keep people updated and so on and so forth. You need to treat this like a proper project. You can talk to me if you want to, uh, if you want feedback or if you want to involve me. But that's where it needs it needs to go. So start there. Maybe don't start building things. To to go as far as to say, uh, if you were to want to launch a site and you wanted to maybe monetize it in a way, maybe try and pre-sell like premium subscriptions by Kickstarter. You know, to try and get those like get a thousand people on board. You know, from day one, if you oh, needed yeah. to. Um, oh yeah, that's that's an excellent idea. Yeah, the, the key point is here is to pre-validate it before you start actually have a product. And that's yeah. what, what needs to be done. And Kickstarter mm -hmm. should probably work fine for this. Uh, and then just take it to La uh, LEGO Ambassador Network and then go from there. So yeah, why not? Totally. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows what we'll see in the future with that idea. <laughs> yeah, <exactly>. Hopefully something. <laughs> I would use it, for sure. <laughs> 
And I think to uh, finish it out for us today, if you want to end kind of giving some advice to people, maybe what your uh, favorite Lego fan site is, besides Swishable, which is obviously the best fan site. Uh, oh, yeah. we, <laughs> uh, besides Swishable, uh, do you have maybe one or two sites that uh, maybe some people might not have heard of that you would really like to follow and recommend to people out there? <laughs> uh, well, uh, um, it is a tricky question. I used to love Classic Space, as you know. Uh, it was my go-to place, mainly for the community. Uh, I think your favorite site is probably also where the, your community is. Uh, I don't have one at the moment, and I regret that. <laughs> I would like to have one. But basically, I think in the general, uh, on, in the Series A4 community, uh, Reddit, uh, as big as it is, is still a pretty uh, unused gem. Think. There's a lot of discussions there uh, going on there, and many AFOLs are there in, in Slash Lego, but uh, there are even more regular people there, and I enjoy that a, a lot. As I said, uh, it's fun to build for regular people. Uh, so that uh, that's probably the one I would uh, try to uh, check out. Another big site, but still pretty unused site, is uh, Stack Ex Exchange. They have a Lego section, which is pretty unused. They uh, do have a Lego section. I, I, I was uh, about like two months ago. I, I ran uh, into it. I was like, what? Yeah, I know. Uh, I know. I didn't know about it either, but I've, I've had fun hanging out there, <laughs> especially getting to know many Mindstorms uh, builders, uh, or at least what they, they think of, because since it's, uh, it comes from a very tech background, they, 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 many people who are there wonder about yeah, Lego coding things and how sensors work and how do I find the exact opacity of a brick so I can measure things to do things and so on and so forth. But it's still a fun site to, <laughs> to hang out at. So those two are, are big sites but still uh, hidden gems. Other than that, I, I really I try to keep track of many websites but I'm not going into many smaller niche sites anymore. Uh, Sadly, I, I built my own uh, feed reader and uh, so on that gives me the general Lego dose I need from blogs and Lego groups on Flickr and so on and so forth. And so what kind of blogs do you pay attention to via the feed? Like uh, the New Elementary, by any mm -hmm. chance? I like to throw that name out there as much as oh, possible. Oh, yeah. I love the New Elementary. Uh, I want to talk to you more to those guys because they do a lot of great work. Um, well, Brother Sprick doesn't have to be mentioned, of course. Uh, I also, oh, I forgot the name of it. Brick Nerd? I think oh, Brick Nerd. Yeah, yes. Tommy yes. Williams. Yeah, exactly. He's a, he's a great guy. Uh, mm -hmm. I really enjoy his writing and his uh, what he, what he uh, blogs about. Uh, there are many others, but uh, I think um, there are also too many uh, copycat blogs out there who wants to, uh, you know, just blog awesome mocks. And we have that covered in the community, to be honest. There's no real need for it. You can try to do it. You can try to build a business off of it. Everybody wants to be a blogger these days. But I wouldn't recommend it. It's boring to read, and, and I get that uh, feel from uh, elsewhere. Uh, so basically, what I, the things I enjoy are things are the sites that have a char character and are trying to do something new. Uh, I'll see if I can uh, figure out some better examples later on, but that's my main <laughs> point. That's a, you, that's a very, very valid, mm -hmm. completely, I agree with you 100% mm -hmm. there. Yes, that is, <laughs> there's a problem. Yeah, like just too many of the same stuff. I don't, I don't, and then you have the, the new elementaries and the brick nerds of the world, mm -hmm. and particularly the new elementary I find to be just a fantastic like spin to take, or it's just like a parts it. blog. Yeah, I completely agree. Uh, that's uh, the idea is awesome, and the writing is awesome. The consistency is great. I, yeah, I love it as well. Cool. They have mad respect for me. <laughs> and then, sort of uh, delving into a couple of uh, just uh, we like to ask these sort of broad questions. Um, mm -hmm. If you were stranded on a desert island, what would be the only Lego set that you would bring? Ah, yes, that one. Uh, I'm a pragmatic guy. Uh, I wouldn't build a set that I, <laughs> that I had for fun. <laughs> that would be a waste of my uh, one utility slot, as I think. So I would probably go for a large Duplo set that I can, uh, you know, try to use it to survive better. I could carry uh, water in the bricks in the in the larger ones uh, if there was water. Uh, I could try to uh, snap bricks together with uh, some cloth between them to to you know make different uh, clothing <laughs> and different. Uh, stuff without ruining the, the actual cloth and so on. So uh, the largest Duplo set, I think, <laughs> would be my answer to that. 
That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like a, a good idea there then. <laughs> so cool, cool set to bring with you. And then I think the the final question we have for you tonight is, do you have a dream Lego set? Is there anything that uh, you have always wanted them to maybe bring back or one that they haven't released that you thought would think would be make a great set? Yeah. And we did touch upon this previously, but maybe rehash just a little bit. Okay, my, my, my dream Lego set, that would be the one that brought back the finger hinge. Yes. I really okay. love the finger hinge. It's an awesome piece. It's the best piece out there. Uh, status, you have to stack up on those while you can. No, no. But so if there ever was a set that uh, brought those back, I would buy so many copies. No, I wouldn't. I would buy finger hinges on Bricklink. But <laughs> still, I would love that set just because it brought the, the finger hinges back. I don't think we'll ever get there. You know, the part is out of production. It will forever be. It has even been replaced. But still, that would be my favorite set. Well, one day when they make an old dark gray monorail that works on a nine volt train track with a finger hinge <laughs> and uh, I don't know whatever other old stuff, just like yeah, it, it'll that just be like the race. yeah, yeah, the old retro set will be the name. <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. I'm not that nostalgic, but uh, yeah, some pieces are. They, there is no replacement for them. <laughs> totally, takes you back. Takes you back. Takes you back as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that's uh, that would be really cool to get some of those back. So it'd, it'd be awesome I, if they ever did release a set with some more of those. So uh, may, maybe one day. <laughs> Keep dreaming. I'll be dreaming. I'm always dreaming. <laughs> and I think that does wrap it up for us with this episode. So, Linus, I really appreciate you joining us on the show here. It was great talking with you and uh, learning more about Swishable, some of the builds you've done over the years and everything. For people who want to uh, follow your work, what's the best place to keep up to date with what you're doing? Oh, well, Swishable is a great way uh, to actually keep tabs on the site. If you want to follow me, I'm available on Twitter, on Facebook, and so on and so forth. If you want the links to all of these sites, just go to linusbowman.se, which is the Swedish top domain, but the site is in English. Uh, there's an About page there, and you can find wherever I am at. <laughs> okay, very cool. I'll put links to all of those sites in the description below that we covered in the show and everything here, so if people want to check those out, just check out the description here, and you'll be able to find those. And I wanted to make sure we thank Brickmania for their support of Beyond the Brick. Uh, this week's featured Brickmania product is the mortar with crate and shell. So just a smaller mortar kit, but if you're working on a military display, a really great accessory for it. I'll have a link to that in the description below as well. And you can check out all the cool products Brickmania has at brickmania.com. So it's great having you with us, Linus. And uh, thanks to everyone out there watching. I'd encourage you to subscribe to the YouTube channel here at Beyond the Brick to make sure you don't miss any of our future interviews and uh, convention videos that we'll be releasing here. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you soon.